The Razer Blade Pro 2019 is the latest in Razer's not as well selling, but still top of the line Razer Blade Pro series. If you've seen Razer Blade Pros of the past, you can kind of understand why most people ended up going for a much better selling Razer Blade 15. I myself even made that choice a couple of times. For one, the Pro has always been this massive 17 inch laptop with tons of power, but the calling it a laptop seemed to be a pretty loose term. The new 2019 model though, while not terribly portable, is following the recently updated design language of the other Blade laptops. And while it might seem small, it makes a huge difference. For the first time since any Blade Pro I've ever seen, it fits in a 15 inch laptop backpack. Only just, mind you, but it does fit. We have a more squared design, again, falling in line with the new design language of all of Razer's new products from their laptops to their phones, which I personally like. And with that, much smaller bezels. This means that even though the Razer Blade Pro has a 17 inch screen, its chassis is much closer to a 15 inch size. Other 15 inch laptops nowadays at least are actually smaller than it, but again, it, it fits in the backpack. That 17.3 inch screen, to be more exact, is a 1080p, 144 hertz panel with a peak brightness of 300 nits and boasts 100% sRGB color gamut with just six millimeter bezels on the sides. Above the screen, we now have all the necessary hardware needed for Windows Hello. This means you can now use your face to sign in, which I prefer a fingerprint for this, but Windows Hello does work well enough and is better than not having either. Under that screen, we have a pretty clicky keyboard with per-key RGB in the form of Razer's Chroma feature, and instead of the trackpad being on the right like it was on older Pro models, it's now in the much more traditional location of under the keyboard, and further helps it fit in line with the other Razer laptops. Personally, I like the new location, as if I was going to be using a mouse to the right, it'd most likely be a separate one anyway, not a trackpad, and it makes for a smaller computer, of course. Also, the trackpad isn't the most responsive that I've used lately. It's great, and it is at least a precision trackpad, which means that Windows itself handles the drivers for it instead of every manufacturer making their own, so it's just more precise, lets you use Windows gesture system, and it's just better. Trust me. One complaint I do have about the keyboard, though, is the fact that Razer, again, decided to put this rogue function button in the bottom right corner. And while that might not seem like much, it means that every time I go to push the right arrow and my muscle memory expects it to be in the same place it is on pretty much every other laptop on the planet, I hit the function key instead. Same goes for the down arrow, which makes me hit the right arrow, etc., etc. Now, of course, with enough use, you will get used to it. But to me, it seems like an unnecessary new habit I have to build that has no real benefit. And besides the overall aesthetic, the Pro is all about Razer trying to squeeze in as much of the latest tech as they can, and the 2019 Pro is no different. Because of the larger chassis, we have ports for days. On the left, we have our AC adapter port, a 2.5 gigabit per second ethernet port for faster transfers over your home network, say to connect to a NAS that supports faster than gigabit speeds, for example. We have two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, which honestly is a rebrand of the USB 3.1 Gen 2 spec, so it's the exact same specs as that. Not sure why they're changing the name, but there you go. We have one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port and our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the right, we have a UHS-3 SD card reader. Razer, please put this on a 15 inch model, thanks. And another USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port that is also a Thunderbolt 3 port. We have another USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, an HDMI 2.0B port, and a Kensington security lock to lock the device to a desk if you have shady coworkers or something. The laptop also supports all the usual suspects on Wi-Fi 802.11, but they added the latest specs slowly becoming more popular, Wi-Fi 6, which is 802.11ax technically. So even though chances are you probably don't have a router that can give you that, the computer will be able to handle it once you decide to upgrade. For specs, we have the latest 9th gen Intel Core i7-9750H processor with six cores clocked at 2.6 gigahertz that can boost to 4.5 gigahertz. This is paired with 16 gigs of RAM when you buy it, but following a trend that I think is really smart of Razer, it's user upgradable to 64 gigs if you want. This upgradability isn't limited to the RAM either. The laptop comes with a 512 gig PCIe NVMe SSD that you can swap out for up to a two terabyte one. And it comes with an unpopulated M.2 SSD slot that you can then add another up to two terabytes of storage to if you need. For audio, we have stereo speakers and an array microphone. We also have Dolby Atmos support out of those speakers, and they sound like this. In this trident resides the power of Atlantis. 
graphics, we have a choice of either an RTX 2060, RTX 2070 Max-Q, or an RTX 2080 Max-Q. In the model I have here, we have the middle of the road, which is the 2070 Max-Q. And for those curious, let's do some benchmarks. And here's how long it took to render out a video in Premiere Pro with all of the settings on Max. And then here is that same video being rendered out on other laptops. For software, we're running Windows 10 Home, and thanks to Razer's no bloatware policy, we only really have the Razer Synapse app added to the normal Windows experience, along with the normal Windows bloatware like Minecraft, etc., which you can thankfully uninstall by just right-clicking on it. And really quick, let's see how it does in a quick battery test. And there you go. The RTX 2070 model that I have here costs $27.99 and it comes with that 512 gig SSD. The RTX 2060 model is $24.99 and the RTX 2080 model is $31.99. And honestly, when you think about all that power and all the ports and all the connectivity, it's not too bad. I do have one issue with it though, and that's the new Razer Blade 15 models. There is now a full HD 240Hz 9th gen Intel Core i7 RTX 2070 model of the Razer Blade 15. And with the same 512 gig SSD in there, it costs $25.99. Now you could also get the 256 gig SSD and upgrade the SSD on your own, which is what I would recommend, and that's $23.99. So for the extra $200 to $400, you can get the Razer Blade Pro 17-inch model. What you gain out of that, though, is, I mean, it's the same processor, same RAM, same storage configurations, except you get an extra M.2 slot that's unpopulated, so if you need more storage than two terabytes, you can do that. Um, you also have the SD card reader. Again, Razer, please put that on a 15-inch model. You get an extra USB Type-C 3.2 Gen 2 port, and of course, that larger screen. Now for me, I'd rather have the portability with the power and that nice sweet spot of the Razer Blade 15. But, you know, if you wanted the larger screen and all those things that I mentioned, then the 17 is not a bad option. But keep in mind, it, it not only barely fit in that backpack, but after I filmed that shot, well, the backpack ripped. But there you go, let me know what you guys think in the comments below this video of the laptop. We'd love to hear from you guys. Like this video and subscribe if you liked the video. And uh, also check out the link below to be taken to my email newsletter that goes out once a week. It gives you all of the videos that are on here on YouTube, but also some other things that don't necessarily make it to video, like tips and tricks and tech news and other things that I do on the site. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.